Hi and welcome to another episode of Willis Garage Norway. This is part 3 of my Rubo style split top workbench build series. In part 1 you saw me designing the bench in Fusion 360 and in part 2 you saw me start to build in real life by building the two bench tops. If you haven't watched those episodes and want to watch them I will leave links down in the description of this video and also in the right hand corner info tag. I will also leave links for most of the tools and other stuff I used on this project in the description so you can check them out. In this episode I will build the whole base and glue the outer frames together. Each leg is going to be made out of three 2x6 inch board glued together while each stretcher, both short and long, is going to be made out of two 2x4 inch boards. So the first thing I had to do was to cut all the boards to the right length using the miter saw and a simple saw stop. This was a rough cut so I left about 10 cm extra, that's approximately 4 inches, on all the lengths. In the end I had 12 rough cut 2x6 inch board for the legs, 8 rough cut 2x4 inch boards for the short stretchers and 4 rough cut 2x4 inch boards for the long stretchers. To straighten and square the boards I went with the same method as I did with the bench top boards. Checking by eye which 2 inch side was the straightest, using this edge towards the table saw fence and ripping off 3 to 4 millimeters. When this was done on all of them I used the side just cut against the table saw fence to cut off 3 to 4 millimeters on the other side. All the boards were quite straight so I took them all to the thicknesser for multiple passes until they were square and of the same width and height. Now I could glue them together by just adding a lot of wood glue, making sure it had glue on the whole surface using a silicone brush, putting the boards together and checking that the edges was flush. I repeated this procedure on all the leg pieces, giving me four 3x2x6 inch boards that could be clamped up and left to dry for a day or two. The same thing was done on the long stretchers and on the short stretchers, giving me all the boards I needed to build the base. This was then clamped up and left to dry for a couple of days. Then I took them all out of the clamps and separated the individual boards, getting them ready for straightening in the jointer slash thicknesser. I figured out which two sides was the straightest and used these two sides against the jointer fence and the jointer flat surface giving me two flat and squared sides. After the stretchers was done this way I did the same with the legs, also giving me two flat and square sides which I then could use in the flat surface of the thicknesser. Using the two flat sides in the thicknesser I gave all the leg boards and stretcher boards multiple passes until they all had matching sizes and I checked once in a while that they were really were square. Now it was time to cut all the pieces to length. First I had to check the width of my legs since they were a bit bigger in real life than they were in the model. I went into Fusion 360 and adjusted the width of the legs to get the correct measurements for them and for the stretchers. I had to do adjustments on the tenons and on the length of the stretchers. After the adjustments I could look up the measurements in the Fusion 360 model. Here I can see that the long stretchers is supposed to be 123 centimeters, that's approximately 48 inches. The short stretchers is going to be 79.8 centimeters, approximately 31.4 inches. And the legs was going to be 80 centimeters, approximately 31.5 inches. Thank you. 
I fire up the miter saw again to cut the boards to the final length using my trusted old simple saw stop. On the stretchers I could cut the whole board in one cut, getting a smooth edge. On the legs, since they were so wide, I had to make the cut from two sides. If you are careful when doing this, it's no problem. So everything cut to final length. Next thing to do was to start on the tenons. To make the tenons a bit easier to cut with the table saw, I made the tenons of a size that I could cut an equal amount of material on all sides. On the legs I had to cut of 2.5 cm, approximately 1 inch, on each side of the tenon. I adjusted the table saw to cut 2.5 cm over the simple table saw sled and made sure it was square from the flat surface. Knowing from the Fusion 360 model that the tenons on the legs was going to be 9 cm in height, I started to make the innermost cut first. I made these cuts very careful all around the leg. Then it was a matter of just cutting multiple times to remove the material around the tenon. I repeated this on all the legs and on all the stretchers, though they had other measurements of course. To make the tenons smooth and of the right size I used a chisel to remove excess material and finish it off with 120 grit sandpaper. After the tenons was completed, it was time to make the mortises. The short stretchers I decided to mount 1 cm inside of the edge of the legs. This was plainly for the looks and not for any type of function. I used the tenon on the short stretchers to mark where it was going to be on the leg. Now I knew where the sides were, so I just made a mark all the way around the tenon. I checked with a 90 degree angle that the top of the stretcher was at the bottom of the leg tenon, then marked where the mortises was going to be. Doing the marking like this I made sure to number all of the tenons and mortises so that everything would fit in the right place when I was going to glue it up. The same procedure on the long stretchers, except that they would be laying flush with the outside of the legs. This has to do with the clamping function of the legwise that I'm going to mount in the future. When everything was marked I went around the edges of the markings with a chisel. This is to prevent any chip out later when using a drill press to remove material inside of the mortises. I used a 12mm wood drill bit in the corners of the mortises, making sure the drill bit would go inside of the markings. At the drill press I made sure that the material I was cutting in was in a 90 degree angle on the drill press table and holding it down with a clamp while drilling the 12mm holes in the corners. Then I used a hole saw that fit exactly inside the markings to remove as much material as possible in the mortise, having to drill two times to get the depth needed. Now I could remove the rest with a chisel making the inner walls as smooth as possible until the tenon belonging to the mortise fit in the hole.
I had some chip outs while chiseling that I glued at once and held it in place with some painter's tape. When all the mortises was chiseled out, I tried everything together to see if it all fit like it should and everything seemed good. The next was to glue up the two H-frames on the sides with the two short stretchers. I applied a lot of glue on the tenon and made sure every surface was covered using a silicone brush. Then I fitted the pieces belonging to each other and clamped it all up as best as I could. Again using most of my workshop's clamps. I let the glue dry for a couple of days before removing all the clamps. I wanted to round off all the corners and edges on the edge frames, so I used a round over bit in my Makita router and went all over the frames. Then I took out the random orbit sander and gave the frames a good sanding until I felt they were ready to pair up with the bench tops made in the previous episode of this build. This was it for this third part of the Rubo style split top workbench series and in the next part I will show you how I paired up the base with the bench tops. If you hit that subscribe button, maybe you will be here to see that. Meanwhile, you can get behind the scenes photos and info on my website, Instagram or Facebook page. Links down below. I would appreciate if you like, dislike or comment. Until next time, goodbye.